So, game two of the World All-Stars versus the Presidents. It's the mixed play just underway with the Presidents 14 kicking off to the All-Stars, which are predominantly made up of Australian players. And little wonder they won their final against New Zealand 11-0. They really have been probably the most domineering team in this competition, uh, the mixed Australian team. And they uh, have six players in the 14. Just run through the teams quickly for uh, the World All-Stars. That's uh, a combination of the best mixed players in the, the tournament so far. It was uh, for Australia, Brett Yates, Dean Russell, Ray Kylie, Sam... Uh, I can't Ayub. That name. Ayub. Sam Ayub. Of course, uh, the very nippy uh, Sam Ayub. Stacey Gregory and Julie Mazzarelli representing New Zealand. Greg Haywar, Wendy Sharp and Lee Clark. Canada has two representatives. Peter <laughs> Todorovic. Todorovic. That's right. Todorovic and Kim Walker. And from Papua New Guinea, Joe Iro. In fact, uh, shares the name of a very uh, prominent New Zealand rugby league player. Representing the President's 14. Australia also represented here with Gary Simmons, Steve Sutton, and Catherine Lockard. From New Zealand, Mel McIntyre. Greg Rao and Laurie Watt, Canada, Paul Waters, Jerry Phillips, Mary Fleming, and Papua New Guinea, these are always the good names, Joe Perigu, Kate Dari, and Liz Aluva. So they're the two teams for the mixed. Joining us uh, in the expert role for the referees for this match is Tim Freebody, one of the Australian referees. So good morning, Tim. And also Gary Black, the national director of the juniors from... New South Wales. Good morning, Gary. You with us, Gary? Yes, <laughs> yes. Getting some late instructions, getting the late mail on the match. We've got uh, the workers up here trying to tie us down so we don't blow away. It's all happening here at the Carrara Sports Ground. This is Stacey Gregory, and uh, she's roll ball there to Dean Russell. Dean Russell was the acting half there and caught in possession of the ball, and so the ball's been turned over to the President's team. We've mentioned how the players have had a lot of difficulty in, in adjusting to the rule changes. Some four rule changes from uh, have been incorporated by the, since the, 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 uh, the state games. Actually, uh, oh, no, we'll, uh, we'll introduce you again, <laughs> All right. Tim. So, uh, as we're saying, but I was just mentioning we've spoken how difficult it has been for the players to uh, adjust uh, to the to the rule changes. How difficult has it been for the referees? Probably around about the same, Bill. There's been there's been no dramatic uh, problems. We've had, fortunately, the players have been very, very good about it. We've uh, had the odd one or two situations which have arisen. Well, here goes Sam. Sam? He's, he's got there now. We've had some uh, situations arisen uh, over the, the tournament that uh, did cause a couple of major hassles, I suppose, to, to some teams, but uh, they've been very, very good. It has been difficult, but again, it's one of those things. It's, it's a first, and uh, we have to have play by ear a little but I think in general been very, very successful. Of course, uh, would you have a, a set of a rule book that uh, you, could, you could relate to, or uh, was it basically from memory? I mean, <laughs> sort of guesswork as you go. Yes, we had to, well, we did have, a, we've got an original set of rules, of course. Um, there was a guideline set out for the FIT rules commencing last year in Canada when we were over there, and um, that was, has since been adjusted and readjusted and revised and revised. We're not too sure what the existing one finally is at this stage, but Everyone seems to be settling in anyway. And we believe there's a meeting as well this afternoon to even uh, to on, ponder the, uh, yes. some new ones perhaps. Yes, I think they're going to sit down and finally work out a, a, uh, a true and correct uh, form, which they have to do anyway. That's Sam Ayub. Australians working it well, using the mid play. Stuart Mazzarella with the ball. Stuart Lazarell at the moment, looking for the forward pass, he's in the end zone and takes it nice, that was a clever piece of work, the pass off, he shot through, was unmarked, found himself all alone in the end zone, that's touchdown number one of the match and it goes to the All-Stars, they lead 1-0, here's the replay, passed off and got through nicely, it was unmarked, the Papua New Guinea player was a little left wandering and uh, touchdown number one. And I think you'll find that was scored by Peter Todorovic of Canada. That's correct. Peter was one of the, uh, obviously, was, was involved last year when we were over in Canada, and he has a 
improved out of sight, so has all the Canadians for that matter. He's improved out of sight with regards to his uh, lateral passes, as they call them. And uh, to see him do that was very, very good, because he's certainly uh, alien to it. That kind of ball has been Brett Yates with the ball. I've seen them struggle, uh, Canadians, when it's come to the lateral passes. A lot of them have uh, you know, misdirected or guided. Forward pass in the end zone again, spoiled this time by the New Zealand player. Kylie as he went through and I think you'll find it was one of his Australian teammates there who gave him a bit of a shove in the back might have been a bit of friendly rivalry in there we've had a timeout called so the players resuming after that timeout and uh, I believe Tim that uh, they're allowed uh, it's the same as the, the normal rules they're allowed one, one timeout to each half each and it goes for a minute as we just uh, hold up as the Australian player goes across the line but he's said he's been touched of course the, the touch judge there now because he doesn't go in the end zone, he remains outside. The referee consults him, sees that the, the touch judge hasn't gone into the end zone, and straight away, uh, players call back, which is uh, good work from the touch judge then, the Canadian touch judge. In fact, that's uh, Mike Edwards. Sam looking for the pass and the end goal, put down. That well, was a chance for the All-Stars to score their second. That was Leanne Clark from New Zealand who went for that catch. I saw her playing for Kennedy yesterday. I'm sure you're right. Wearing a heavy bandage on her hamstring. Suggests there's a problem. Sam Ayub looking for runners. Players hanging off him. There you go. The forward pass is on. Two players in the end zone. And knocked out. Incomplete. There's a chance. It comes back. All stars retain possession. Quick play of the ball. Searching wide. Plays in the end zone. No, again, the linesman remains in the field of play. So the touch was made and the play wasn't completed. So a changeover. President's 14 staving off that attack. Some excellent defence here from the President's 12. They're really having to work hard here. They've been put under a lot of pressure from the All Stars. Canadian player. Forward pass. Forward pass, yeah. Within the five metres. Gives the All-Stars a chance. We'll just run through the uh, officials for this match. He uh, had Bill Potter up in the commentary position for the, the last match. And uh, Bill is now down in the centre. He's from New Zealand. Russell Ilka from Australia. He's the other referee. Oh, easy uh, touchdown in the end. He sent his players in the end zone. The, uh, all the defence was hanging on those players. And the Australian player, Brett Yates. Brett Yates, yeah able to cross for the second touchdown. Here it is again. He sent his players in the end zone. Oh, well and truly marked. And he found himself unmarked and just strolled across the line. It's touchdown number two. So the All-Stars now lead two touchdowns to nil. The uh, try scorers, Peter Dorovich from Canada and Brett Yates, that last touchdown from Australia. But until then, the, the, President's, fought, the President's 12, we should say, uh, defence had been good. So they work the short side. Well, it seems to be a skill that uh, we might have to uh, adapt to there because I noticed over the last few days there's been a lot of touchdowns scored from uh, the people just laying off that, uh, that ball thrower and we, we tend to forget that uh, he or she can, can run over the line and score that touchdown. It's, it seems to be happening quite a lot. I'll tell you when it did happen, uh, it was yesterday in the, the match between uh, Australia and New Zealand in the in the Masters. That's correct, yes. Australia found themselves in all sorts of bother. Yes. They were, they were really hanging off the New Zealand play the players. They were going for the runners and uh, leaving the thrower unmarked. See, what's happening, of course, is uh, all being new to us as well, of course, this, this uh, forward pass. Now we're all just getting the skills of chasing all the uh, receivers, which the, they go every, every which way. Oh, there's a touch. Well, to wait for the referee's decision. A bit undecided there, I think. I'm quite sure that the two linesmen are now gone in the end zone area and it is awarded to Dean Russell. So Dean Russell from Australia. That must have been very close. third touchdown for the All-Stars and they lead three touchdowns to nil. Just waiting for the restart. Just going through the officials again. Mike Edwards and Sarah Edwards, husband and wife team from Canada. They've 
move from the in zone and they're on the sidelines, the touch judges. And uh, in the end zones, Greg Summers from Australia and John Christenthal also from Australia. President's 14 in possession. A trail, 3 0. Good defence there from Peter Dorovich, Canada. Searching wide. It's a hole in the middle. Pass slightly forward. Good uh, run onto the pass well. Almost up to the halfway mark. Deliberately thrown away. Change over. All stars a chance to increase their lead. Not too often we've seen the President's 14 go outside of their own half. So it's good defence. This is Sammy Ayu. He's a very quick player, very quick on his feet. Has a deceptive turn of speed as well. He can seem to be very smooth running. And then all of a sudden, a goose step and he's away. Very hard to defend against. That's from New South Wales. Of course, uh, we saw him in action at the Nationals. And he caused all sorts of headaches for the Queensland team in the mixed uh, final there. Can they get out of their own half? They've been pinned down there for so long. Here's the Canadian player looking for the forward pass. Goes to the lateral in the end. Quick hands out the back line. Good running onto the ball, but uh, bad hands. That's the President's 12 down again. So five minutes remaining in the first half. The All-Stars leading. Three touchdowns to nil. Dodderich plays it back. Hates gets his pass away. And we might just mention the fact that uh, not only were players selected to represent the All-Stars and President's 12 side, but we also had the coaches and managers selected, and they were then rated as the, the best coach and the best manager in World Touch. The coach of the World All-Stars team is Steve Sharman of Australia, and the manager of the All-Stars team is John Balabu of Papua New Guinea. John is a driving force behind Touch in Papua New Guinea. And, uh, a nice person. That's touchdown number four for the All-Stars. Beautiful work from Sam Ayub, the lead-up work. And in the end, just a short pass to the Canadian girl. That's down number four. Pick up who she is in just a moment. I think it was uh, Kim Walker. She's the only uh, Canadian in the World All-Stars team. The only woman. So, Kim Walker watches up for number four. We're into the last five minutes of uh, this, the first half of the mixed All-Stars versus Presidents. With me in the commentary position is Gary Blackett, National Juniors Director of New South Wales, and Tim Freebody, representing the Australian referees, helping us out with some of the rules. Which had us all a little confused here at uh, these titles. Yes, 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 yes. Bill, this, uh, the, the forward passes that, that these people are throwing today with these blustery, blustery conditions must be very, very awkward for the players because um, it would be swirling around there something fierce, I would imagine. But, uh, certainly a lot of skill would be required to, to uh, make them land where they're, where they're going. We are really treated to some, uh, some great forward passing in the, the previous match. Uh, Jim uh, Ricketts from the United States and a couple of the Canadian players were really treating us to some great forward passing and they strung together a, a bag load of uh, touchdowns. But it's the first time that I've really seen that, that played so well. I mean, I guess because uh, it's, it's a little freer. It's got, it's got a combination of players and almost a chance for the Papua New Guinea player, Joe Irio, coming through. Put uh, it down. And straight away, he subs himself off. And I've noticed also when uh, it's compulsory, uh, I'll ask you this, uh, Tim, when a, a player scores a touchdown, subs himself on him or the awesome person. It's not compulsory, but it's, uh, it's standard practice. The reason being is that normally some sort of effort has been put in to, uh, to, to, to get there, but uh, it's also a good practice that, that the teams continually move on and off in terms of sub-wise so that the, uh, the players are all fresh. And, uh, if you stay on that fraction too long, that's normally when a touchdown is scored, of course, against you. So here's a little long pass. Well taken. Good work for the President's 14. That was a good run by Steve Sutton, and he's offloaded the ball to Catherine Lockhead, and, and Catherine might be over. No, touched. No, fifth touch. That's the fifth. They uh, used the lateral pass there well, just to uh, take a bit of the pressure off, and then the runners went through very quickly. It was good work. Here's the forward 
pass again in the end zone. No chance. Well intercepted. The All Stars stave off another attack. Well, the first attack that the President's 14 have been able to mount. The President's 12, I keep calling the 14. There's only 12 players out there, is that right, Gary? That's right, there's only 12, 12 selected in the side. And the way that the selections were actually done in selecting the All Stars team was that when we finished the tournament, the World Cup, six players were chosen from the winning side, three were chosen from the second place side, two from the third place side, and one from the fourth place side. You're right when you're ready. We really wanted to add an international flavour to this World All Stars team. And the President's 12 side was made up of three players from each of those four semi-final place teams. Yes, Ray. So subsequently, it's um, naturally weaker. Well, that's right. Slightly weaker, but uh, I think still the, the concept of this World All-Stars is that it is a world team and players from various parts of the world playing in the team. A very strong side. We must just to mention that this is the inaugural World, world Cup. That, that didn't go five metres? That's correct, yes. When we say five metres, it has to go five metres in a forward motion. Certainly in a forward. It can so go the entire length of the field, as we saw the Canadians uh, particularly doing. Uh, but it must go forward five metres, otherwise it'll, it'll incur a penalty. So it can go uh, from one side of the field to the other, but it doesn't travel in a forward motion, at least five metres, uh, the players call back. That's great. Here we see the President's 14. I thought he was through, he was just touched. A lot of occasions, the players don't actually know that, don't know they're touched. Uh, I guess they get touched on the shirt, uh, on, the, on the sole of the shoe. An honesty system, I guess, isn't it? Very but, much uh, so. It's, it's the only problem in the game, actually. And Chance for the President's 14. Oh, well, he feel it, but was he in the. Yeah, he's watered it fair, the, the in, in zone man. Well, I think he had taken it cleanly, and then he was pushed over the uh, the dead ball line, and. <laughs> yeah, watered. It's yeah. awarded. So, well, yeah. great stuff from the President's 14. Yeah. They fight back. They still trail. They're down oh. four touchdowns to one. Here's the replay. I think you'll find that. Uh, going to receive the ball just short of the line here. We'll just look at this. Here Pass goes. there from Steve Sutton. Yes, no, yes, no, wait. Uh, it's hard to see, isn't it? Obviously, it must be inside the line. It was well taken under pressure in the end by Gary Simmons of Australia to score the first touchdown for the President's 12. The Australian uh, referees in the end zone. Uh, in the previous game, we had the two Canadians and... Uh, just mentioned how good they were. Uh, a lot of their play, of course, revolves around end play, uh, the end zone play, and uh, it's vital up there. So they were, they were particularly on the ball. So it was good to work there from the Australian referee uh, down in this uh, end zone. What we see there, Bill, you, you were just mentioning a moment ago about the Canadian referees and, and uh, how their work was very, very good. In an incident like that, we in Australia, we, we accept most of those humps and bumps and, and don't sort of think there's the half-time silent. So now Yub goes for a run. Stands up the opposite number and gets around him. run out of room. The desperation forward pass in the end. The flag was up anyway. That summons the end of the first half. As we take you to the break, the All-Stars leading. President's 12-4. Touchdowns to one. Referee summons time on for the second half. The All Stars leading four touchdowns to one. Now there's a knock on, and that's counted as one touch. That's correct. So there's no uh, official knock on for the kickoff, but uh, you are being penalised for one touch. So when the next play the ball commences, it's the second touch. The President's uh, 12 trailing by four goals to one. It's the ball pass. Beat the player first. It's a good one. It's for uh, the. Canadian player, Jerry Phillip. Showed some good pace, but uh, the outstretched arm wasn't long enough. The ball went to the that brings play right back to five or six metres inside of the President's 12 side of the field. Dolovich gets his pass away. Rolling play. Yates. Dolovich again. Take the play to five metres out. Now comes the set play. Yates. Rolling at the back, there looks for is. the short pass oh in the yeah. end goal. Oh, easy as pie. That was a nice piece of work, but uh, the referee's called it back. The pass didn't go five metres. Must have been extremely close that one. Touch and go. She took it in the air and actually jumped in the in, in zone. So maybe just under that five metres. I'm not allowed to comment, uh, Bill, but I think it's good actually. Do you think? <laughs> 
was good. <laughs> You're not down there. Who was the referee? We'll give him All a right. bag uh, after the match. Then as it's turned over, it falls in, doesn't go quite to five minutes. That's called an incomplete. Uh, oh, that's, not an incomplete. that's a penalty. Yeah, penalty. Turned over at six more. Oh, he's a big Long pass. pass in the end zone. Oh. Wow, bad luck. Driving across desperation. That was all of 55 metres that time. Canadian player. The guy who won the uh, throw off yesterday. Uh, uh, Paul, what's his last name there, Bill? I think it's uh, he's been a, a tower of strength in the mixed team. Paul Wounders. That's him, yes. Has got an elastic band for an arm. <laughs> Jim doesn't uh, do too bad a job himself. Here's the set play. Trolling at the back. Sam Ayub's in the end zone. So is the Papa New Guinea in play. Yates is there. Misses. All touch the ground. Incomplete. Uh, play comes back to where the ball was thrown. And it's a handover. So presidents have it. It's very difficult to pick up the players uh, without the numbers on. We can tell you. One of the Papua New Guinea players, that's about all we can tell you. <laughs> Steve Sutton to Gary Simmons. Gary Simmons was actually the Australian captain. Victorious captain in the World Cup. Australia, in fact, uh, successful in all four. And that pass didn't go five metres. Australians, uh, in particular, trying to use that short pass. It's not working. It's failing to go to five metres. It must be very difficult to measure. Particularly when, so the, when they're a long way apart across the field. Well, the players always tell us that, Bill, so uh, we'll have to sort of keep that in mind. I think what's happening today is because today we're being around here. There's another one now. We work from Yates, spoiled nicely by uh, Jerry Phillip from Canada, flying high above the pack, in almost uh, Australian rule style, and that's uh, pretty apt, considering the game is being played here in Carrara, home of the Brisbane Bears, VFL, Australian football. It's a different game here. I'm just wondering whether any contracts are going to be handed out at the end of this. <laughs> the, uh, potential Warwick Cappers playing today. I think the, uh, the only ones who come close to Warwick Capper are the women with their shorts. <laughs> Presidents in possession. Searching wide. An overlap here. Jerry Phillips has player outside. Breakthrough, it was good cover defence from the All Stars. Swing it back the other way. Defence again. He's still on. Dropping back. Where's the forward pass? Jerry Phillips is open in the middle and doesn't quite get it. I think the ball may have carried to him. Uh, getting in the way. Yeah, the presence level, they certainly uh, troll, I should say. They certainly score each other there. I just got to mention before, Bill, that, uh, that Jerry Phillip has uh, been on the receiving end of some fantastic passes during the week, and he, he's uh, certainly a, uh, a great player to have on the side. He's, he's running 50 and 60 metres at times to continue his ball. They actually did very well, the Canadian mixed team. I was watching part of their semi-final yesterday, and at half-time they trailed 5-4. That's correct, yep. I didn't get the final score. Actually, it went down 10-6 uh, in, in the final. 10-6. Uh, it was only the last five or six minutes that they actually get away from it. And again, the only skills that they have to improve on quickly would be the, the lateral ball uh, and the defence. They just seem to sort of uh, the switches. Once the switches start creating, they, they have those holes to start uh, creating in the defence, and that's the end of that. Here we go again. Catherine Lockhead, well, uh, almost. Off the knees, I think. Complete. It's a changeover between the sixth tackle. One thing we haven't seen too much of today, which we were seeing yesterday, and that was the bomb where players were throwing a rugby-style pass up into the air in the end zone, and players were going up for it. So instead of using the gridiron-style forward pass, they were just throwing it the, the spiral rugby-style pass. I think uh, Bill Potter and I call it the speculator. <laughs> Chance for a touchdown. That'll be awarded. That's a good touchdown. It was a piece of smart play from the All-Stars. Rattle up another one. That one was scored by Greg Hayhaw from New Zealand. Let's have a look at the replay. It was a neat piece of work. Jerry Phillips came across late, affected the touch, but uh, at that stage, Greg Hayhaw had it down. Well, in 
impact as, as soon as he took the ball in the air. Once he uh, fielded it cleanly, comes down as a water. That's right. As soon as you, your entire body has crossed the scoreline, the plane of the scoreline, then that's regarded as a touchdown. Presidents looking for the forward pass, but he didn't have any runners. <laughs> Still, he, uh, he managed to fool the opposition, gave himself a little bit of uh, latitude, a little bit of uh, room to play with, and he made some nice inroads into the defence. Player caught with the ball, it's the dummy half. Oh. She'll have to go all the way, oh. can't she? But she's got to pass off, even if she gets into that in-goal zone, because uh, she was the dummy half. And, of course, she's not allowed to score from that position, but what a great run it was. She certainly came very close to scoring that one, and she showed some remarkable pace there, but uh, I think Kim Walker had just a little bit more pace and was able to pick her up half a metre short of the line. So the All-Stars in possession. That is um, one rule. Tim, we saw a lot, uh, particularly in the Nationals, where a player would cross the line from, from dummy half and okay. then would, would have to you know, urgently look for a, a support player to pass off to. Yes, again, uh, it's, it's a reasonably new rule. We, we've had... Uh, you know, he's a long pass. Oh, you oh, bad luck. Bad luck. Yes. Greeting, almost taken clean by Ray Kiley. The acting half rule is uh, becoming a bit of a, a problem in many ways. That was brought in purely and solely to try and stop what we call the, the dive over touchdown, which was uh, people that were diving over from a metre out and causing all sorts of problems in our game because it's a game of honesty. And, uh, unlike oh, unlike um, rugby or league, where when you've got the tackle and you know when the person's certainly tackled in our game, it's only a, only a faint touch. Here we go again. That's a nice spiralling throw. Well taken out in the end zone. Will be awarded. Was she touched there? I don't think she was. No, no. She actually took the ball outside and then rolled in. And she was on the ground. And I don't think it ever had a chance of, of getting to her. So that's uh, touchdown number two. And the president's side really uh, putting together a good performance. Catherine Lockhead, in fact, it was. Here's the, the replay. Catherine took it, rolled. And well, touch and go. Yes, but still. He was there, so I think the body was down. So. We got the benefit of the doubt anyway. It's on the scoreboard. Read about it in the paper, as they might say. 5-2 to the, the All-Stars over the President's 12. And still a reasonably close game. This President's 12 are really giving the All-Stars a run for their money. Yes, yeah, something like the, the other game, the Masters, where the All-Stars uh, really ran away. 11 touchdowns to four. And maybe there would have been a little bit of assisting maybe a little bit of spite in that last match with uh, I guess a lot of New Zealanders uh, would have made the, the president side and they were probably looking for revenge in that defeat they couldn't turn the tide stars well and truly on top of uh, the Masters winning 11 -4. they only lead uh, five touchdowns to two in this match and the president's still in with a chance they have possession all important one rule that uh, I find amusing Tim is uh, when a player has been sent to Effectively, I guess they can call the sin bin, do they? That's correct, the sin bin, yes. He's there at uh, Her Majesty's pleasure. That's correct, also. He can be uh, there uh, for as, for as, until the referee decides, hey, I've got someone down there. Normally, we have a, it's a bit of an unwritten law. We have an, uh, at least, say, a five minutes of a period, but uh, there's no set period. It's just that that's what it says. It's a period of time. Well, there's a forward pass, yes, within the five metres. Can you fill it? But basically, what, all we're doing is to try and uh, stamp out any sort of uh, professional fouls or or um, illegal play, and uh, if the time is accordingly for what's, what action was deserved. So. Ten minutes of play gone in the second half. The All-Stars lead. Five touchdowns to two over the President's 12. When I say, of course, when he's banished to the to the uh, in-goal area, chance here, if, well, it was spoiled. Well, I thought he may have been able to go all, all, all the way himself. He's tried to pass off in the end zone. When the player uh, is banished, to the in-goal area. Uh, there is no timekeeper to say... Uh, no, it's purely at the referee's uh, discretion. Well, here's an interesting uh, that situation. That that'll, that'll be awarded a touchdown. In this case, it's deflected off the hand of one of the president's players, and Greg Hayhaw was there to pick up his second touchdown. It was quite a fortunate touchdown. Here we have the replay. So there's the... Almost spoiled, but taken. Greg Hay or Johnny on the spot. They lead 6-2. Dean Russell to kick off for the All-Stars. If you just want to expand on that, Tim, that you were talking about, the 
end zone. Basically, all it falls down to, uh, to obviously simply, it's, it's at the referee's discretion, but depending on how serious the offence was uh, as to how long he or she stays there. Um, if the player is actually sent off for the game, they, they don't stand on the end zone, they're, they're sent to the side of the field and, and, uh, and away from all, uh, all further play. And cannot be replaced? Cannot be replaced, nor. And for that matter, nor can the, a uh, player who's sent for a period of time also can't be replaced until they're called back on. There's a long pass. Look well at this that. This is a great one. If he can just oh. take it. Oh, well, unfortunately he can't. He was a little bit lost. Maybe the sun in the eyes. Uh, the wind swirling around up there was playing havoc with it. He just couldn't uh, field that great bomb. So it's a great passing from this uh, Canadian player. For the, the Presidents. Only some of those passes that come off. Uh, the Presidents might find themselves a little bit closer in this, on the scoreboard. So they trail 6-2. Sam Ayub. Blind side. They do that well, the Australians, don't they? They concentrate on their blind side, take a couple of rucks up, make a lot of ground there. That uh, gives their backs plenty of room to work with uh, when they're called for. Sam you that pass looked a bit suspect. It was forward and yes. the changeover. In our national titles held just recently, most of the Australian sides, well, well there weren't Australian sides then, of course, but the state sides, um, in their general six touch rough type arrangements, they were making 50 metres each. So the game was played at a Played at an enormous pace and uh, the actual ability to, to control his balls is shown here. Presidents in possession. Here's the runners. Just a forward pass. That's another good pass. Too big. They're, they're actually running with the wind, the Presidents uh, 12 at the moment. Although it is changed, the wind changes directions, so uh, sort of swirling around. And the time out goal, though. Timeout, timeout, the All-Stars leading, 6-2. Well, after last night's festivities down at the uh, golf club, today's game uh, really taking on a carnival atmosphere, a picnic atmosphere. In fact, a lot of the uh, players who aren't uh, involved in the matches today bathing themselves in this brilliant sunlight that we have on the Gold Coast today, and particularly at Carrara. The skies are absolutely clear, not a cloud to be seen, and uh, really a wonderful day to be on the sidelines. Not so wonderful to be out in the middle. It's a bit hot out there. I think when you're sporting a hangover, I'm sure as many of these people are. We saw Peter Todorovic, the Canadian player, trying to throw one of his forward passes, and that's the big part of their game over in Canada. The forward passes, their game is is based on gridiron, so it's it's all forward passes, and it's stop-start where they have their plays, the same as the gridiron you see on TV. We're into the last five minutes of the match. The All-Stars have the game well and truly in their keeping. Lead five goals for the touchdowns to two. And look at Jerry Greg here. Greg Haywall has scored two of those for New Zealand. Well, Jerry Phillips diving forward, lunging, trying to uh, get a hand on that. Just can't get it. He's called back to the halfway mark. The All-Stars. Dorovich, you're saying uh, before Gary is one of the players who's improved uh, Canada's point of view. He's in possession now, Greg, looking. I've uh, caught out that case. He certainly has, and uh, the Canadians, New Zealanders, the, they've all come along here. Oh, a great intercept from the, the Papua New Guinean player, Joe Paguro. But uh, had some interference from that player. Back. There. Yep, that's what happened. You really do need the two uh, referees there, don't you? There's no way possible that one referee could uh, possibly counter all the, uh, the what's happening at them. I mean, this is too Not just long pass, Bill. Once that pass goes, you, you simply can't run with it, so we need an extra pair of eyes. Chance for the oh, end zone. Yeah. Nice pass from Dorovich. Oh, straight into the waiting hours, but again, play's being called back. Yes, I think One count. And uh, quickly turning defence into attack. Presidents. Good defence from the All-Stars. Got back very quickly. Hands along the back line. It's uh, a big part of the match is, is your ability to recover. After being on uh, attack, you can find yourself very quickly on the defensive. And, uh, your ability, and I guess that's where fitness comes in. I was saying yesterday that uh, the Australian women, apart from the Australian gymnasts who went over to the Olympic Games, were the fittest women athletes in Australia. Chance for Jerry Phillips. 
Diving high above the pack. It's incomplete. Play comes back to 10 metres out. Well, good to see the President's 12 haven't thrown the talent. They're still coming home with a late charge. Into the, the last five minutes, they trail 5-2. Well, one of the pleasing um, aspects of this entire competition this, this time has been the, the presence and the, the uh, performance of the Papuans. Uh, they were a bit of an unknown quantity. And of course, when they've uh, come down here with, with their, their penalty for inside the five, when they've come down here and uh, performed as they have done, it's uh, absolutely marvellous. Everybody, everyone's enjoyed their company and they put on some superb efforts. big honour for these players to be selected uh, in the All-Stars team. Are they taking it as such, Gary? They, were they, you know, was it just an honorary thing, do you think, on their behalf, or were they no, it, honestly elated the fact that they had been? They certainly were, and uh, the cheers really went up last night as each name was read out for the All-Stars side, and especially the, the Canadians. They were overjoyed as their players' names were, were announced into those teams. Gary, there was even a few uh, tears in a few people's eyes, I think, when they missed out, in all honesty. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd imagine that there were too. But uh, I, I think the, the spirit of the whole evening overcame any, any upset at missing out and uh, the camaraderie between all the, the nations. Has been excellent. Particularly borne out um, the relationship between the Canadian and Australians, so we keep mentioning. Uh, friendships, uh, and uh, it's been quite amazing. Hey, you're right. right a few sad people, I guess, at the airport when uh, the planes finally fly home. Yes. It's, uh, I suppose like most major sporting events, it's, a, it's an emotional moment, but um, there certainly will be a lot of, a lot of uh, friends going. And there's the full-time Hooters. So the All-Stars keeping up their unbeaten record, winning the mixed uh, match, beating the President's 12 by five touchdowns to two. Not so, quite well, over we're yet. not quite over. Just have to play out this penalty there and uh, have to wait till the ball goes dead. So, so it's elementary. Yes. There'll be uh, no change to the result. There may be a change. Maybe well. a Let's change. see a long pass just to finish it off with Speculator. Who's there? Incomplete. And that's all time. So the All Stars do keep that unbeaten record. They lead and they win. 5 2.